Hey folks, how's it going? Hopefully you guys are having a fantastic day. I really enjoyed the last episode, man. My favorite scene was the sex scene. Him trying to talk his way through it. And then when she pulled out a chocolate mousse, he like freaked out. And one of you guys told me in the comments that uh, I guess the director wanted to make sure the audience knew for sure there was chocolate right away. So they wouldn't think that um, him and the old girl were having like, you know, poop sex, scat sex or whatever. So that was a little interesting, like tidbit of information. That would have been super gross, but that would have been funny, though. I would have died laughing if that happened. Like you, the in-betweener scene when he got hit in the face of that poop and he was walking around like a lost child. That was gold to me, man. My chest was hurting after laughing at that, dude. Oh, my God. I felt sick, and I was laughing at the same time. That was fantastic. That was a great scene. Whatever. I got off the subject. But, yeah, I enjoyed the last episode. Let's go ahead and jump into this one, folks, and we'll definitely talk about it more in the end. Get back to Cockadoodle Who. Cockadoodle Who. <laughs> and I asked, who invented the skip? Jack on line two. Good morning, Alan. Good uh, morning. Look, I just wanted to... Uh say your comments earlier about farmers was ignorant and offensive. Who Slagging is farmers off. Are you going to apologise to them all on your show, are you? Are you going to Come on, I mean, you must know some of the rotten rubbish you produce. I mean, tongue, for example. Who eats tongue, for goodness sake? Imagine a tongue sticking out of a sesame seed cob. Listen, you made these comments without any real knowledge about the You've got a brain, or is your head just full of shit? <laughs> OK, Mike from Polgrave, are you there, sir? Oh, you ignorant c- <laughs> Why is he starship with so farmers? Why is he even having farmers man. on the show? There's a little Japanese soldier in here still fighting the war. <laughs> You're daft racist. <laughs> Curly black and kinky. <laughs> Mixed with yellow chinky. Oh my god. Can you still say that? Yeah, for photocopiers. <laughs> no, no, I was dressed as an exclamation mark. <laughs> well, no, I, I walked out after five minutes. It was demeaning. Mm. Had to flag a cab dressed up, which, which helped actually. <laughs> Me all a bit of Auburn. Thank you very much indeed. Kiss my face. Hey. I am going to present a corporate video for Hamilton's water breaks. Champion. Why, yay! That sounds jolly, doesn't it? Why, yay! Uh, well, there's a there's a real market, right? All the little boats come up and they've got all the Michael, fresh Michael, produce. Michael, 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 come on. Tell me about the lady boys. <laughs> oh, you mean them transsexuals? I, I seen them, but you know, they're disgusting. I kept away from them. Oh God, yeah. Stories yeah. about them. I, mean, I, I did hear about this corporal, right? And he's in the third battalion, this lad. But he's right mean, okay? Yeah. And he guns out in Bangkok, right? And all the prostitutes is coming up and saying how much. Oh. And he's going, oh, I'm not paying that, right? Yeah. And then this beautiful lassie comes up. She's gorgeous, man. <laughs> and, and, and funnily enough, it lands on its wheels and it starts first time, and they just drive away. <laughs> <laughs> a terrible story. Strangest story I've ever heard. Farmers about oh, what you've said. Right. How many? Fifty. Oh, your age. <laughs> well, Hamilton's of. Alan, you've uh, come free at the side. Oh, sorry. She's <laughs> living with a narcissistic sports pimp. You, you popped out again. Oh. So that, that wasn't deliberate, I promise you. It's not a cry for help. <laughs> just the, the, I've had these shorts since 1982. The corporate video. Lynn, 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 you speak to her. You speak oh. to her. Please. Hello. Oh, yes, he is. It's a man. Oh, that's, that's, that's a boyfriend. Oh. Hello? Yeah, before, Bob's your uncle. You've, you've got a deep bath. <laughs> yeah, well, if you would, please, yes. He's gone to get Carol. You speak to her. You speak to her. Oh, my God. Hello, Carol. How are you? Oh, uh, Carol, would you like to be in Alan's corporate? Yeah. Well done, Lynn. Now, before we get up, I'm just going to warn you, I have popped out again. <laughs> and it, it, it's, it's, in, it's in no way connected with our proximity. What we need is a great big melting <coughs> pot Big enough to take the world and all it's got Keep it turning I can say nothing So cold right. buddy Hello Alan Lynn's a good worker But uh, I suppose she's a bit like Burt Reynolds very reliable, but you're not a man, are you? No. Right. Would you settle this month's <laughs> bill, please? Eight pounds mis miscellaneous services. That sounds disconcertingly vague. 
You used this play channel? Yes, yes, because, because it was the wrong, wrong film. Uh, have you seen it? Is it good? What, Driving Miss Daisy or Bangkok Chick Boys? <laughs> <laughs> Driving Miss Daisy. Is it a good film? Mr Cartridge was just saying that he couldn't see Bangkok Chick Boys from his bathroom. Well, you can if you angle the mirror by the door. Do you want me to show you? No, I only watched it for five minutes. It's, it's, the remote control's confusing. Oh, what you will have done yes, is... Yes, I want you to show me the button that says no. Oh, no, I'll show you that mirror thing. No. <laughs> Look, um, do, do you want me to settle this bill? Uh, no. I mean, yes. <laughs> You're right, it is confusing, isn't it? Yes. And could you top it up with some Gordon's gin? Uh, a gin and tonic. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, fine. Uh, oh, hello. The gentlemen from the corporate video are on their way. Excellent. Well, I've done my homework. Yeah. Would you like a drink? And, and do use that word. <laughs> Uh, are you Alan Partridge? Yes. <coughs> Hi, I'm Steve Bennett. I'm the director of the oh, Hamilton's uh, Water. Right, we video. spoke on the phone. Yeah, yes, this please. is uh, Hugh Morris. He's the marketing director for Hamilton's. He's going to be coming along with us, sort of uh, keeping an eye on us. Right, make sure I... Some voice box. This sounds great fun. Where did you get those at a toy shop? <laughs> I haven't got any vocal cords. Sound like the girl in The Exorcist. <laughs> I've got to say, I love the script. It's superb. Um, there's a lovely phrase in this. Vocal cords. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, Alan, we, 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 we want to keep it simple. Uh, and that, okay, that, that's why we hired you. You're, you're a local fella. You know, that means good uh, communications with, with tradesmen, with landlords. With I was drunk. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, mean, I woke up this morning asleep on the sink. It's like this. Been asleep for eight hours, like that. <laughs> Got up, walked downstairs, straight downstairs, had breakfast, didn't even wash my hands, because I'm a bloody bloke. Hey. <laughs> You're in the lager and these two drinks here. God. Yes, yes, th th these are the chasers. I've never had one of them. God. We never had uh, a lager and, and gin and tonic and Bailey's Irish cream chaser. No. Your big girl's bras. <laughs> Jeez. <laughs> ah. Mm. Oh, lady boys. <laughs> you want one? Yeah. yeah. Being men. D. They need the voice box to drink. Alan. I'm, I'm confused. <laughs> what time is it? Six. Oh, that's the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm gonna cook all the food. <laughs> Alan, this is a hotel. Yeah, three star. <laughs> How's, uh, how's Mr. Planet of the Apes, man? <laughs> uh, is he still driving that Renault Megane? Uh, can I just read you something from uh, Top Gear magazine? It's a pain. <laughs> Uphill runs become power-sappingly mundane, while overtaking National Express coaches can become a long, drawn-out affair. <laughs> Not my words, Carol, the words of Top Gear magazine. Movies. Sports. CNN, Adult Channel. That's your dirty movies. Yeah, not really my cup of tea. Well, I can disconnect it, put a scramble on it, just lock it out of the system. Uh, I'm <laughs> probably a lot of trouble. There. That's disconnected. Good. <laughs> it looks so disappointed. All right, lads. Oh, all right, Alan. Yeah, I got uh, really dry. <laughs> what? Yeah, just certainly uh, first in the queue when God was handing out chests, <laughs> memory glands. <laughs> Ooh, oh, I'd love to have water breaks. With the melting of the polar ice caps, most of East Anglia will be underwater in the next 30 years. So make the most of her stunning fens before the floods come, causing a little concern for these local farmers I chatted to. Oh my God! <laughs> Bay this can is... cope with anything, and I mean anything. <laughs> Earlier on, I put in a pound of mashed up Dundee cake. Let's take a look. Not a trace. Peace of mind, I'm sure, especially if you have elderly relatives on board. <laughs> uh, oh, we'll cut that out. Play some music over it. 
How are your, uh, how's your friends? Sort of beef with farmers. Fine. It might look a bit pokey from the outside, you know. Just a joke. I'm joined by Alice, who's not going to shrink me into a little bottle. She's going to tell me about Hamilton's holiday breaks. You regularly book, don't you? Yeah. Uh, do you do that with your boyfriend, or...? No, I do it alone. <laughs> it's so stupid. Sorry, th thank you, love. Thank you. <laughs> uh, a bit odd. She sounds weird. Up with the party. <laughs> You're joining so me, Alan Partridge, and Peter Baxendale Thomas of the Norfolk Hill. Hill. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Sorry. Um, do you, have you got any, do you, any requests? Anyone you want to say hello to? Or look, I'm just trying to say that when you make ignorant comments like you did yeah. the other day, you serve simply to alarm the public Without and to relax because of all, <laughs> all the chemicals you, you, you put in their uh, chips. Alan, I don't have donkeys, and even if I did, I wouldn't feed them chips. This is exactly the sort of rubbish you came up with the other day when you talked about putting a spine in a bat. I, I, I admit that, that you end that, up living like some bloody tramp in a lay-by. It's a travel tavern. I don't care what you call your sordid little grief hole. It makes no difference to me. The fact is that an awful lot of my colleagues... Yeah, farmyard animals. Yeah. Oh, my God. You're talking about my friends. Yeah, I, 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 I You get yourself got, out of yeah. a lot of silly bother. Yeah, you are a big posh sod with plums in your mouth. And, and, and I don't and, think it's and, got anything to do with class. And the plums have mutated and they've got beaks. Beaks? <laughs> yes, beaks. Have you got any more of this, or do you want it's to stop at quacking stupid. bums? No, no, you, you make... Oh, what? Well, if you fill a swan's stomach up with beef burgers, it's full of fat, it'll float better. That's why we do it. Really? No, you complete cretin. I'm just contributing <laughs> to this total farce. What else are you going to accuse me of? Oh, God. This is all to if you see a lovely field with a family having a picnic, and there's a nice pond in it, you fill in the pond with concrete, you plough the family into the field, you blow up the tree and use the leaves to make a dress for your wife, who is also your brother. <laughs> Because of all the chemicals you've put in them. And these chickens are scared. They don't know why they're so big. They, they go, oh, why am I so massive? And they're looking down on all the other little chickens. And they think they're in an aeroplane because all the other chickens are so small. Completely correct. Yes. <laughs> yes. And you also run over badgers in your tractor for fun. Yes. <laughs> Thank you, Peter Baxendale Thomas. This just is... Just playing a shoplifter. Mm. Well, that's quite good. Mm. Oh, well, we'll just, we'll just have to think of something. Scene 13, take two. One of the benefits of global warming and international terrorism is that more and more people are holidaying in England. The benefits of global warming and international terrorism... Is that... <laughs> 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 it's so fucking stupid. Action. Absolutely. The Norfolk Broads offers the oh my God. a million miles from your thoughts as you negotiate the Norfolk Broads. In fact, the very fact that hardcore pornography is not on the agenda will <laughs> <laughs> Hey, it's a dead <laughs> So book a holiday with Hamilton. <laughs> Walk away to have a good time. Oh, Cut. Okay, stick him in the ambulance. Reception. Right, Susan, uh -huh. can you uh, can you make pornography come on my telly, please? <laughs> oh, that was really funny, man. Now the bar scene. I remember, like, I, I reacted to the bar scene on YouTube. Um, the farmer scene looked familiar, but I don't think I've seen it. But like, I reacted to the bar scene on YouTube. I the thing I thought was funny was he was making fun of like the voice box guy, but like learning that he was like into lady boys and then him calling the drink lady boys was really funny. I thought there was just something he just jumped out, came up with from when I watched the clip, just like the top of his head. Um, but yeah, that, that added a little bit more to it, but it was still funny seeing him make fun of old boy with the voice box. Cause I kind of, I didn't completely remember the scene hundred percent. Cause you know, I react to so many different clips, um, from so many different shows, but yeah, man, 
this is a really funny episode. Like, why does he have such beef with farmers? I don't get it. Like, why, do, why does he hate farmers so much? Is it just a beef that he just wanted to start and he just keeps on going with it? And when he first talks to the farmer, I'm like, why is he talking to farmers? And then he starts talking all that shit. Like, dude, what's wrong with this dude? It was fantastic. I thought maybe they're going to dump... When I saw him on the bridge, I thought maybe they're going to dump manure or something on him. I didn't expect him to throw an entire cow. That was, that was stupid. That was stupid and hilarious. Uh, <laughs> when he was talking to the girl, so she goes on a boat by herself. He's like, no, that's weird. You're weird. Oh, God. Good. Really good episode. Very funny episode. Um, he played... He, that dude keeps on playing his assistant when she was like, I can play your wife. And he essentially called her a lady boy. Is it Burt Reynolds? Like, he's reliable but has a mustache. Oh, my God. That dude is so cold-blooded when it comes to his assistant. Uh, I can't tell. Like, the, like, I'm guessing she has a crush on him. That's the only reason why she would stick around the way she does. Because sometimes they, like, shows that kind of just push you in there, make you think somebody is, like, going to hit it off and do something. Or they make you think they, the person has a crush on them. They just care about them. So, you never really know for sure. But I wonder if she does, like, have, like, a crush on them. I don't know. Just because how jealous she was acting with old girl. But he did say that she didn't like the, the girl already. Because, you know what I mean? Because I have friends who are girls who don't like other girls I'm friends with. But they have no interest in dating me. They just don't like that girl. So, that doesn't necessarily mean that she likes him. So, I don't know. I'm starting to get curious, like, if she does, like, actually, actually dig this guy. I know we're only three episodes in, but I wonder if she actually digs him. Um, yeah, man. It's a good episode. I really enjoyed it. So that is it, man. That's all for this one. Hopefully you guys are happy, safe, and healthy. And I'll see you in the next one. Later.